Hey guys, this is Awesome Coder. So in this tutorial we're going to create Brick Breaker game using Scratch 3. So let me show you the finished product. Here you can see we got a ball that bounces off the paddle and destroys the bricks. And the score is also increasing. And if I miss the ball on purpose, you can see the game over text appears. Now let me try to destroy all the bricks in order to win the game. Here I'll fast forward in time to save time. Okay, let's destroy this last brick. And you can see I won the game. So yeah, I think you're going to enjoy building this game with me. So without further ado let's get started. Now inside my scratch editor, first of all I'll rename the project to Brick Breaker. Remove the default cat sprite. Now first we need to create the paddle sprite. So click choose a sprite. In the search bar type paddle. Now let's change the color of the paddle. You can skip this step if you want to. Select fill tool from the toolbar. I'll select a light blue color, feel free to choose the color of your choice. We'll color the main part by clicking on it. Now I'll change the fill color of the middle line here. So I'll pick a dark blue color. And color the line by clicking on it. Okay, I'm happy with the new look of our paddle. So let's get back to the code area. Set the X position of the paddle to 0, in order to center it horizontally. And set the Y position to minus 160. Now as you saw in the finished version of the game, we control the movement of the paddle using the mouse. So for that, first of all drag in the green flag clicked block. Let me zoom in a little. Now whenever the game starts, we need to reset its position back to the bottom center of the stage as it is now. So from motion drag in the go to block and values for X and Y are already set for us. Now bring in the forever block. We need to always point in the direction of the mouse. So bring in the point towards mouse pointer block from the motion category. And bring in the move 10 steps block. So now the paddle will always move 10 steps in the direction of the mouse. Now let's run the game. Well the paddle is obviously following the mouse. But notice it is following the mouse in both X and Y axis. We want the paddle to only follow the mouse in the X axis. So for that after moving 10 steps, we need to set the Y position back to minus 160. Okay, now the paddle is moving horizontally. But we have one problem here. The paddle is also rotating and we don't want it obviously. So to fix this issue, scroll down in the motion category. And bring in this set rotation style block. And from drop down set rotation style to don't rotate. Play the game. Cool, now we can control the paddle correctly by moving the mouse. Now let me show you a little problem here. As you can see the paddle can actually move outside of the stage. Let's fix it. Bring in the if on edge bounce block from the motion. And put it here. Play the game. Great, now the paddle can't move outside the stage. And let's also test the movement of the paddle. Cool. It looks perfect, I think. Next we'll create the ball sprite. Click on choose a sprite. Search for a sprite named ball. I'll select this ball sprite. Switch to the costumes tab. And here I'll delete all the costumes except the one which I want. Switch back to the code area. Set the size of the ball to 40%. And center the ball on the stage by setting both X and Y to 0. Now let's add the movement code for the ball. Bring in the green flag clicked block. Bring in the forever block. First let's actually set the ball's position to 0 on both X and Y axis. 
please make sure not to put this block inside the forever block. Bring in the point in direction block. And set direction to 45 degrees. So that the ball points in the top right direction. Now inside forever block, put move 10 steps block. Now our ball should move in top right direction. Let's run the game. Okay, good the ball is moving. Now let's make the ball bounce off the walls. So simply bring in, if on edge, bounce block. Put it here. Run the game. And voila! The ball is now bouncing off the edges of the stage. There is one thing I must draw your attention to. Notice when I run the game the ball immediately starts moving, we don't want that. We want the ball to wait for a second and then start moving. So bring in the wait one second block and put it just above the forever block. Run the game and now the ball is waiting for a second and then starts moving in the top right direction. Now just like the ball bounces off the walls, it also needs to bounce off the paddle. So let's add the code for that. Drag in the if block. Drag in the touching block. From drop down select paddle. So now when the ball touches the paddle the code inside this block is going to run. So when that happens we want the ball to broadcast a custom message. From events bring in this, broadcast and wait block. Here we want to broadcast a custom message. So click on message 1. And select new message from the drop down. Here pass in, bounce, as the message name. Now bring in this, when I receive message 1 block. Instead of the message 1 select the custom, bounce message, from the drop down. So now when the ball touches the paddle, First we need our ball to change its direction and then move in that direction, so it'll effectively bounce off the paddle. From motion bring in point in direction block. From operators drag in the subtraction operation. Here put in 180. And put in the current direction of the ball here. Now let me show you how this math works here. Imagine the ball is moving towards bottom right direction, which is 135 degrees. Now if we subtract 135 from 180, we're going to get 45. Which means the ball is now going to point in the top right direction. And we just want that for our ball to bounce. And this math is going to work for any direction the ball is facing. Now let's put this whole math operations result inside here. Now bring in the repeat until block. From operators bring in not block. And from sensing bring in touching block. Select paddle from the drop down. Now the code inside this block is going to run until the ball is no longer touching the paddle. Here put in move 10 steps block. Now this repeat until block ensures that after touching the paddle, the ball bounces off the paddle correctly. Now run the game. Perfect, the ball now bounces off the paddle. Now we'll create the brick sprite. Click on choose a sprite. Search a sprite named button. From here select this button to sprite. Switch to the costumes tab. I only want this orange costume here. Rename the sprite to brick. The brick is quite large so set its size to 50%. Now it's looking right. Now let's add code for the brick sprite. So bring in the green flag clicked block.
Whenever the game starts we'll set the size of the brick to 50%. Select variables category. And rename this, my variable. That is already created for us to score. Make sure to select the checkbox, so that the score appears on the stage. Now we want to create many rows of bricks. To make the rows of the bricks, first we'll move the original sprite across the top left of the stage. So set X to minus 200 and Y to 135. Bring in the go to block. The correct values are already set because we just changed them in the sprites properties. Now we want to create a 4x7 grid of the brick clones. For that we need two repeat blocks. So bring in the repeat block. Here instead of 10 pass in 4, which represents our rows. Duplicate the block. And instead of 4 pass in 7, which is gonna be our columns. Now here we'll create the clone of this brick. So bring in, create clone of myself block. And after creating a clone, the original sprite should move by 65 in the x-axis. That's why we're changing x by 65 here. Now when we come of this repeat block, which creates the columns, we must again set the x back to minus 200, so that it starts cloning on the next row from the leftmost edge. So bring in the set x block, and make sure to put it inside the outer repeat loop. And we need to change the y by minus 30, because we need to jump to the next row. And changing y by minus 30 allows us to move downwards. Now run the game. Well, we can see the grid of the bricks. But notice this extra brick. It is the original sprite from which the clones were created. We need to hide it when the game starts. So from looks bring in hide block and put it here. Now run the game. Ha, huh, but now we can't see any brick. That's because here we hide the original brick, so all the cloned bricks will also become hidden. We need a way to tell the clones to not to hide. So for that from control bring in when I start as a clone block. Here simply insert the show block. Play the game. Perfect, now we are getting a 4 by 7 grid of the bricks. Next we want the bricks to be destroyed whenever the ball hits them. But before that, let's set the score to 0 whenever the game starts. So here drag in the forever block. And put it here. Now bring in the if block. Bring in the touching block. Select the ball from the drop down. So when the ball touches a brick, first of all the brick should be destroyed, right? So from control bring in delete this clone block. Run the game. Okay, now the bricks are being destroyed whenever they touch the ball. But notice the ball is not bouncing off the bricks. We need the ball to bounce off the bricks otherwise the game is not going to be fun. And we'll easily be able to destroy all the bricks in no time. So now how should we tell the ball to bounce whenever it touches a brick? Let me select the ball sprite. Recall earlier we created this bounce message, which tells the ball to bounce off in the other direction. Well we can actually broadcast the bounce message in our brick sprite. And the ball is going to bounce off the brick. So select the brick sprite. From events drag in the broadcast bounce block. Now let's test the game. Great, now the ball is bouncing off the bricks and the bricks are also destroying correctly. Now let's increment our score whenever a brick is destroyed. Bring in change score by one block. And put it above delete this clone block. 
Run the game. Perfect, now the score is also increasing whenever a brick is destroyed. Now let's create the game over sprite. Select paint a sprite. Select the type tool from the toolbar. Click on the canvas and type game over. Here I'll choose a red fill color. Let's center the text on the canvas. So zoom in a little. And with the move tool selected, move the text to the middle of the crosshair. Get back to the code area. Let's make the text a little larger. So set size to 200%. Set both X and Y to zero. Rename the sprite to game over. Now we want to show this game over text when the ball gets past the paddle in the bottom direction. So select the ball sprite. Here bring in the green flag clicked. Insert the forever block. Bring in the if block. Bring in the Y position from the motion category. Now recall that the paddle's Y position is minus 160. As you can see here. So we need to check if the ball's Y position is less than minus 160. If the ball's Y position becomes less than minus 160, it means the ball has got past the paddle. So we need to broadcast a custom message here. From the drop down select new message. And name the message game over. Now select the game over sprite. Bring in the all familiar when green flag clicked block. And when the game starts, first we need to hide the game over sprite. And also set both the X and the Y to zero. From events bring in when I receive block. From the drop down select game over. So when the game over message gets broadcasted, we need to show this game over sprite. And we also need to stop the game. So from control bring in stop all block. Play the game. Let's loose the game on purpose. And perfect, the game over message gets displayed when the balls gets past the paddle. Let's test this theory again. Okay, our game over logic is working fine. Now let's create our winning text. So again and choose a sprite options click on paint. Here rename the sprite to you win. Select the text tool. And type you win. Let's center the sprite on canvas. Here I'll choose a dark green color for the text. Switch back to the code area. Set the size of the you win sprite to 200%. Set both X and Y to zero. Let's hide this game over sprite by clicking on the I button. And also let's hide this you win sprite. Now let's add the code to you win sprite. Bring in the when green flag clicked. Set both X and Y to zero. Bring in the hide block. From control bring in wait until block. From operators bring in the equality operator. Here we'll say when the score is equal to 28. And the score will only become 28. 
when all the bricks are destroyed. Because recall that we created a 4 by 7 grid of the bricks. And if we multiply 4 by 7, we get 28 as the answer. Put this block as an input to the wait until block. Now after the score becomes 28, which means all the bricks get destroyed. We will show this, you win, sprite. So from looks bring in show block. And put it here. And after winning the game we also need to stop the game. So bring in, stop all block. Let's play the game for the very last time. To see the winning text, first I have to destroy all the bricks. I don't want to waste your important time. So I'll fast forward in time. Let's destroy the very last brick. And voila, you can see the you win message displays. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Until next time.